All right, so this is my community garden area that I have an opportunity to work in. And I just started this at the beginning of quarantine. And when I first got the garden bed, it looked just like this. So if you turn around, um, I had an opportunity to pick this bed or that bed, and they all look the same, but I picked this one. Um, I just had a little bit more space. It was right next to the water. And I had, I had these two extra pieces, these like tower garden things that would, would, would be included in it because they're right next to it. And then I also had the fence line to potentially grow things up on. So I chose this pot and I've cardboarded and mulched all of this, raised this up. Um, but pretty much everything you see here has been planted from the beginning, aside from these marigolds, which I took from over there planted them over here just to get some pest control. So let me just show you what we have going on here. Uh, these are some sunflowers. Uh, this is, I think, a mammoth sunflower. So this one should get to get to be about 12 feet high. So that should be fun. I did that. I've never grown that variety. Um, over here, typically, um, this is a strawberry garden. Um, and I didn't have any strawberries. So what I did, I knew these iguanas loved hot peppers. So I put the hot peppers low down in here because they wouldn't see it. And they're actually doing okay. Um, so I have habaneros. I have some habaneros. I have a, I think a reaper. And this one, this one's a serrano. And this one's actually starting to flower. So we'll get some peppers in there. Um, this is a, a dragon tail radish, never grown this before, but it's cool. It's purple and it's going to grow up here and grow these long radish pods that are this long. They're like a spicy bean with a radish flavor. So that'll be good. And then I'm going to eventually, right now it's so hot and I didn't know what was going to take. You can slice these open. I redid this. Um, I can slice these open and put herbs or mints and things around here. Um, after this heat goes away a little bit. Got some cucumbers over here. And surprisingly enough, the iguanas haven't gotten them. Uh, they, they like those, so I'm just going to leave them there. This is a goji berry. Same plant that I had in my yard. I just threw it in there. All right. So this is the problem. These are all sweet potatoes, but they eat every single leaf off. And I've come in and planted and replanted and replanted. So I'm going to have to come up with a solution to this. I'm going to potentially get a hawk and put it up on that post, which might deter them. But you can see other gardeners this gentleman pretty much stopped doing his thing for now because it's hot. But he uses a fence, and that could be a benefit thing. It's just hard to get in and out and work work on that. So this is actually a weed that most people pull up. They consider this a weed, but this is called purslane, and you can eat this. This is edible. So I knew it would do well in, like, a hot, dry climate. So when I find them, I just put them in here. Uh, and I can use this in my salad. This here, I just love this plant. This is not edible, um, but it has these nice little flowers and it just will cover up this cement block. Keep dropping these. Okay. All right, so along the back, do we wanna walk back there? Okay. So along the back, I have some pineapples. I have a African gourd, that the thing that's spinning around. That is going to grow up and along the fence, and that fence will hold these big gourds, and those can be used to make bowls. So I want to try to make some bowls so when I'm preparing food, I can use those because they're cool. Um, I have some echinacea going on. I have a tree there. I think it's a sapodilla tree seedling that popped up. Some lemongrass, I just cut those back about four days ago. 
So all of that growth from the bottom to the top is only four days. And I have some asparagus, purple asparagus bean that the iguanas have been eating off. So I've just been reseeding them. Um, I have a little baby eggplant. I'll show you. I'll walk over there. You can get it from over here. This just came up. And I was at my garden a few days ago. This is brand new. So I have a little baby eggplant here. Their flowers are pretty cool. So every everywhere you get a flower, if you get a pollinator, then you get a, a, a fruit off of that, which is a vegetable. So I took these and planted them every few. I'm not a huge fan of eggplant, but I knew they would grow and I just had them. So I put them in the ground. Uh, this basil is doing really good here. Uh, and I did plant some ginger over here. So something that I planted is coming up right here. So in this raised bed, we do not have any irrigation. Uh, you can imagine that is not, not ideal. So what we do to solve that problem is we have these rain barrels. You can get these, you can source them on Facebook potentially. What they're used for is to, uh, they're used to um, carry either food products or chemicals. So you wanna make sure you get them from a source that's carried a food product. So they're food grade and haven't had weird chemicals in them, especially if you want an organic garden. So anyway, what we do is we fill these up and you just do a basic drip system and then you can just open it up. Uh, right now it's empty, but you just open that up and the line will drip it out. So typically what I do is I water my garden. I fill that up and then just ask another fellow gardener that's coming on a day that I'm not here just to open up my line and then it'll garden when I'm not, it'll water when I'm not here. So that's an easy solution if you don't have irrigation. So thanks for coming to my garden today. Uh, it is really hot. I just wanted to showcase a few of the plants and, and what it is and the potential opportunities that you might have in your backyard that you haven't even thought about. So do some research, find a garden, get involved and start growing.